Welcome to another reformer video. My name is Melanie. This is my friend Rebecca. Today we're going to do a Pilates reformer abs workout with a focus on obliques by request. So we're starting on one heavy spring or one red spring. We're going to begin kneeling on the reformer with your knees right up against the shoulder blocks. Your hands will come onto the frame in front of you just under your shoulders to begin. We're just going to start with a quick cat cow. So what we're going to do is flex the spine up like someone's pushing your belly button from underneath and then you're going to arch, sending your tailbone back behind you, letting this nice curve and look forward. Just really working the spine, building some mobility to start, using your breath. Good inhaling as you arch up, really getting that upper spine flexion. Exhaling as you flare your sits bones back. Let's do two more. Very nice. Feel like you're blowing up a balloon as you exhale here. Sorry about the sirens, you're getting a slice of uh, New York studio here. So bring your spine back to neutral. Bring your rib cage up and you're gonna walk your hands out a little bit further on the frame so you've got somewhere to go. You're gonna keep your spine in neutral. Take a big breath in, exhale, engage your abdominals as you pull the carriage forward using your upper body and your core and bring it right back. So what you see Rebecca is not doing is she's not scooting the knees forward under her. Everything is being fired from the core, from the upper body. You inhale when you bring the carriage back, exhale, bring it forward. And if you feel like you could use a little bit more challenge or your shoulders are going way over your hands, walk your hands a little bit further out on the frame. Nice. If you feel like it's way too much challenge for you, you can bring the hands a little bit further in or switch to a blue spring or a light spring if it feels better. Okay, last two. On this last one, we're gonna bring it forward and hold for 10, nine, eight, seven. Keep your gaze down, nice long line through the back of the neck. Four, three, two, one. Bring it back in, take a big breath as you rest. And what we're gonna do is extend the right leg back over single leg extension. So now we've got a little less stability because we've removed one contact point. That right hip is wrapped down. You're going to keep the abs engaged, big breath in, exhale, pull the carriage forward and bring it right back. So you'll see Rebecca's working hard to keep her left hip right above the left knee. And there's definitely a lot more work happening in the core, shoulders, and then through the rest of the arms here. Make sure you exhale as you pull the carriage forward. I'm gonna go for about three more. And again, if you feel like your shoulders are going way over your hands, walk the hands a little bit further forward. Good. Last one, we're gonna hold here. Leg stays up, tiny pulses with that leg go up for eight. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Let the carriage come back in, keep the leg up as you go in. Place the knee down. Shake out the wrists if you need to. We're gonna move on to the other side. So walk the hands up to the same position. Try to keep your feet from meeting in the center. Send the left leg back behind you. Make sure the hip isn't wrapping back, or wrapping out to the side. Big breath in, exhale, pull the carriage forward. Draw it back. Try to lift that left foot behind you if you can. So we're not lifting the leg so high that you're getting a huge scoop in the lumbar spine here, but you do wanna make sure that the heel is at least as high as your butt if you have access to that range. Good, legs should be right in line with your hip, so not crossing over and not winged out to the side. Make sure you're putting pressure in the palms too so you get a little bit of separation through the shoulder blades here. Should have about one or two more. Good, make sure you don't pull the body too far over the hands. Last one, pause. We're gonna hold the carriage there, pulse that leg up for eight, seven, six. Bring the carriage a little bit further in, Rebecca. Oh, uh, sorry. Yeah, so you're not pushing you're too much pressure. Four, three, two, one. Le keep the leg lifted. Bring the carriage to a close. Knee goes down. Let's take a quick child's pose really fast. Hips to heels, big breath in. Exhale. Feel your body melt down. Good, and now we're gonna go for those obliques. So knees come back up. Both hands will come to the right rail. Hips right over your knees. Your fingertips are gonna face outward and you want about a foot of distance between both of your hands. 
Feet are right in line with your hips. Big breath in, make sure the abs are supported. You're gonna exhale, pull the carriage forward and draw it back in. If you're, this, this is a great example. If you find that you're bumping into your right hand, walk the hands out a little bit further. So here we're getting a little bit of obliques. Make sure the hips and feet aren't twisting as you do this. You wanna maintain that pressure through the hands so you get a nice separation through your shoulder blades. Good. We're gonna go for three or four more. And your hands don't have to be super wide on this one. They can be about shoulder distance or a little bit closer together. Last two. Very good. Last one, you're gonna hold here for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Big breath in, exhale, bring it all the way back home, other side. So now your hands go to the other frame. If you need to shake out the wrist, feel free. Fingertips face forward, thumbs are on the outside of the frame with your other fingers. Engage the abs, deep breath in, make sure your feet are in line with your hips behind you. <laughs> we all have that one thing. Big breath in, exhale, pull it forward, and bring it back to close. Rebecca, your left hand can come a little bit closer to your right hand next time you come in. Good, yeah, just to give you a little bit more room to work. And you'll see that Rebecca's hips are about over her heels. You could even shift your hips back a little tiny bit, Rebecca. Yeah. So you're not pulsing the carriage forward with your knees. You're, again, using the obliques, using your arms and the rest of your upper body to, to fire this movement. Let's go for about three more. Last two, nice use of breath. And again, as we did on the last side, on the last one, hold. We've got eight, seven, six, five, four, three, straight elbows. Straight elbows, and one, bring it on home. Quick child's pose once you close the carriage. Hips to heels, hands on the frame in front of you. Big breath in, feel your ribcage expand out in 3D. Exhale, blow up your balloon, abs engage. Roll up to sitting. We're now gonna move on to the next movement. All right, so next we're gonna do some kneeling work on the floor. Rebecca, if you would, please flip to one blue spring or one light spring. We're actually going to kneel on the floor. So if you have a reformer that has legs, you're gonna to wanna to get a box to put it on the floor right next to the machine in line with the mat. Yours is down close to the floor like this one. You're all good. Maybe just grab a rolled up towel or a mat to go under your knees. So what we're gonna do is Rebecca's gonna come onto the floor. We're going to kneel onto the floor, roll out your towel or whatever you have, and you want to be aligned such that your knees are far enough back that when you put your, your left hand on the shoulder block next to you, the hand will be resting right by your shoulder. So we're going to take a big breath and exhale, press the carriage forward through the shoulder block. Inhale, elbow stays bent down as you bring the carriage right back in. Every time you exhale is when we press away. Good. Think about slow control on the way out. Slow control on the way in. And if this resistance is feeling very doable, of course you can take it up to a red or add more reps if you want to. Really focus on that elbow going tight to the rib cage rather than out to the side. Yeah, and if you need to reposition, of course, do what you gotta do. Good, let's take three more. Positioning looks good. Rebecca's doing a great job of keeping a nice long line in the back of the neck, not craning up. Good, and let's take our last one here. Good, now we're gonna make it more interesting. So just as we did in the straight arm pulls, Rebecca, if you would lift up your right leg behind you, and we're gonna focus on keeping the hips nice and square so she's not rotating the hip out to the side. Lift the foot a little bit more. You're gonna keep that leg lifted, engage the abs, big breath in, exhale, press the arm forward, move the carriage, elbow comes tight in toward the rib cage, there you go. Let's go for seven more, eight in total. Nice use of breath. So again, exhale as you press away, abs engage. Inhale as you bring the carriage in. This is five. Four. Last three, don't let that heel dip down behind you. Make sure you're not curving through the upper spine or arching back behind you. You want that nice neutral spine so you're supported. 
Good. We should have about two more. And one. Good. Hold it there. Now what we're going to do is as we bring the carriage in, we're going to draw the knee in toward the body. We're going to flex the spine up, curving in this kind of cat arch, cat curve position. Exhale. You can arch the back a little bit. Yes. As you press out. Flex the spine as you come in. Knee and elbow come toward the body. Exhale. Unfurl everything. Good. Feel that mobility through the spine just as we did in that cat cow in the beginning of class. Isn't it nice when you get those little echoes of yes. the same thing coming through? <laughs> Good. Let's take three more. So we're at about six of these or so. Good. This is two. Really feel the spine unfurling. And last one. Very nice. Bring it back to that neutral position. So now your leg extends straight back behind you. Back is in a neutral spine. We're going to extend the arm out. Now we're just going to pulse that leg up a few inches and down. Let's go for eight, seven, six, five, four, three. You're almost there. Two and one. Lift the leg up. Big breath in. Exhale. Draw everything back home. So nice. We're going to go on to the other side. So take your mat with you or move your box to the other side. So you're going to come to kneeling on the opposite side of your reformer. And straps can go out of the way. Again, your hand should be just about right aligned with that right shoulder here. Elbow should come right into the rib cage facing downward. Yep, and you will be probably pretty close to the edge of the machine. I'm missing a little bit more. Pressing through that left palm so your shoulder blades are not sticking together. Big breath and exhale. Right arm presses forward and comes back in, elbow almost skims the side of the body. Really good, good. So we're taking about eight of these in total. This will be six. And think about the press happening through kind of this squishy bottom part of your palm rather than gripping through the fingers. That may also help you engage all these muscles of your upper back here. Good, make sure your toes are as wide as your knees, not drifting towards each other. Good, three more, elbow stays tight to the body. And just as Rebecca is, get your nice long line through the back of the neck. Let's go for two more. And one, very nice. Now your left leg is the one that extends back behind you. Make sure your hips are square, so your left hip bone is facing down as well as the right, and you're pressing that arm forward. Exhale. Very good, control. Elbow stays down as you bring it in. Beautiful. Rebecca's doing a great job of keeping that foot right in line with your hip. I know you probably can't see the foot in the frame, but you see the line of the leg, I hope. Good, we are taking about four more from here. This is three. Last two, elbow stays down. And last one, hold it out. Now we're going to go for the arch and curl. So arm stays extended. Now knee and elbow meet each other as the body flexes and we press out, take a little baby arch. Eyes go up, very nice. And take about six of these. Exhale as you arch up, chest lifts. Elbow stays in toward the, the rib cage, yes. Good, big breath in as you arch. And exhale as you arch the body up. Good, two more. <sighs> exhale as soon as you press through that palm. And good, hold it. Now we're gonna bring it back to neutral. Good, foot comes down. And we take our pulses up if you need to reset. That's okay, that's all right. Leg comes back up to hip height. Arm is pressed out. We pulse the leg up and down. Let's go for eight, seven, six, Five, nice long line through the back of the neck. Four, three, two, one, big breath and exhale. Carriage comes in, knee comes down, close the stopper, roll on up, shake out the wrists if you need to, and we're gonna move into more obliques. So get rid of that knee pad. I'll take that for you, Rebecca. Thank you very much. And, oh, I'm really glad I didn't knock anything over. And we're gonna switch on to one red spring. So, or one heavy spring. So we're gonna begin with our star prep. We'll begin facing camera. That will be Rebecca's left side. We're gonna start in a kneeling position with your left hand on the foot bar. 
You want all of your knuckles facing directly to the side and you want to think about revving the engine so that you've got a nice straight line through the wrist. You're going to make sure your legs are together so your knees are together and what you're going to do is rock to the side a little bit so your hips are in a nice straight line but you're diagonal. So it may feel like your right knee is coming up off the mat a little bit. Your hand can be on the hip. And what we're going to do is start there, rev the engine a little bit, Rebecca, and you're going to just let the carriage drift out, away from the stopper, and back in. Good. Thinking about that head going on an upward diagonal each time you come in. Good. Slowly, carefully closing the stopper so you take care not to bang it. Nice. We're going to go for about five more. If you feel like you want to take the arm floated up each time you go out or just hold it there, if you like, that is awesome too. Take our last two, but those are options, not commands. And one. Good. Pressing through that palm. Bring it all the way back in. Now we're going to spice it up a little bit. So close the carriage all the way. You're going to extend your right leg over the shoulder rest so the leg is straight. We're going to begin playing with drifting that leg up and down. So you're still in that same prep position. The leg lifts up each time you press away. And this can go as high as you feel comfortable with and stable with. It does not have to be a super wide range of motion. And if this also feels very doable, congratulations. You can keep the leg lifted up the whole time if you like, but if that does not feel good to you or doesn't feel stable, build up to it or work in the area that feels appropriately challenging. Good. Keep your eyes on those uh, knuckles staying revved forward. Let's take two more. Good. And push through that left palm so the ear stays away from your shoulder. Push away and hold for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Everything comes back to home and we're going to go for the other side. Close the stopper all the way and we're going to start with the knees together for this next one. So right hand is on the foot bar right in line with your shoulder. Knees will be together. You're going to push into that right hand and make sure you shift your weight over so you're in this diagonal position. Hand will be on the hip. So we're just going to begin sending the carriage away and bringing it back. Think about the little um, center of your elbow facing more forward rather than up to the ceiling to ensure that you're not hyperextending your elbow here. Good, really nice, very strong, Rebecca. And you can begin floating the arm up if you like. Very good control. Let's take another three or four. Good. Let's make it four. This will be your last two. And bring it all the way in. Close the carriage with control. You're going to extend your left leg over the headrest now for that nice straight line. Rev the motorcycle. Make sure the eye of your elbow is facing more forward than up. Big breath in. Exhale. You're going to float the carriage away. Lift that leg and bring it back down. Very nice. Keeping that pressure through the right hand. Keep the shoulder away from your ear. It's not hiked up. Good. And again, if this feels doable, you can keep that right leg up. You're such a ballerina, Rebecca, in the best way. Good. Let's go for four. And again, if this range of motion on the extension out of the carriage is too much, you can make this very small. As long as you're getting a challenge through the side of the body, it's all good. Good. Last one. And we're going to take a hold as you press out. This will be for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Bring it all the way back in. Legs go down. And let's move into a little side plank. So we're going to keep that right hand on the foot bar while we're facing in that direction. We're going to let the legs cross in front of each other so that one foot is up against each of the shoulder blocks. Your left leg will be against that front shoulder block. Your right leg will be against the back shoulder block. Right hand in line with your right shoulder on the foot bar. Left hand will be on the hip or you can extend up to the ceiling if you like. We're going to go hand on the hip so we don't get cut off here. We're going to begin pressing away, letting that carriage float out. 
and bring it all the way back in. So what you don't wanna do is let the bottom hip kind of sink in down toward the carriage or down toward the mat as you let the, you let the uh, carriage go out. You wanna think about the shoulders staying square. So think about that top elbow wrapping right in line with your side. You also wanna think about your head traveling on an upward diagonal each time you come in. We'll just do two more of these here. But on the last one, you know I always have a little something spicy for you. We're gonna press out and just take tiny pulses up with the hips. Let's go for eight, seven, six, five, four, almost there, three, two, one. Big breath in, bring it to neutral. All the way home, let's transition right into the other side. Left hand on the foot bar. Let's rotate to face the opposite direction. For this next side, right foot will be on the front shoulder block. Left foot will be on the back shoulder block. Left hand in line with your left shoulder, and we're going to keep the top hand on the top hip. Push into that left hand so you don't have your shoulders by your ears. We're gonna press the carriage in and out. So remember, each time you go out, you're gonna think about your head going in an upward diagonal. Good. And think about revving the motorcycle so you're not putting too much pressure on your wrist. I know it sucks, but very helpful for your wrist health to not just be compressing that um, joint intensely. Good. And it's also common to want to let that right hip wrap forward. Really think about it staying stacked on top of the bottom hip. So almost like the bottom hip moving forward a little bit might help you. Good. I think we've got about two or three more. This is two. Pressure through that left palm. And one, hold it out there. Now we're just gonna take those tiny pulses up and down for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Close the carriage, bring it all the way back. Knees can come down. Let's take it just a child's pose over the foot bar. So knees as wide as you like, arms extend out, feel the back extend. Big breath in, your head can relax wherever it feels comfortable. Exhale, you can nod your head yes. Shake your head no. And roll on up to sitting whenever you're ready. Cool, let's just do one more thing before we end. We're gonna stay on a red spring. If you want a little bit more fire, you could do a blue spring. This will be facing the foot bar. So your toes will be curled under right up against those shoulder blocks. Your hands will be on the foot bar as wide as your shoulders. Uh, knuckles will be motorcycled forward. We're going to press up through the foot bar, lift the knees up, push the carriage out straight. Make sure you've got separation between your shoulder blades and you're gonna send the carriage back away from the foot bar. Inhale, head goes on an upward diagonal as you bring the carriage right back in. I'm just gonna go for a handful of these, plus or minus three. Head goes up, very nice. Core really tight and engaged. Good, let me see another three. Keep your chin tucked back so you're almost getting like a double chin action but your ears are nice and aligned, your neck is nice and aligned. I lied, we'll do one more. Bring it all the way in, final hold for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Bend the knees, bring the carriage all the way in. Take your last little child's pose. Big breath in. Exhale, release. Last one, deep breath in, exhale, release. Good, let's turn to face whichever direction makes sense. We're gonna sit in a cross-legged position. Just do a little bit of side body and oblique stretch since we did a lot of that today. Legs can be crossed, forward, whatever makes sense. Arms will be long by your sides. We're gonna take a deep breath in, exhale, reach the left arm up and over. Palm flips to face the floor. Your opposite hand will be pressed into the floor or the headrest. Reach that body up, <laughs> that arm up and over. Left hip is wrapping into the floor. Deep breath in, exhale. Reach up and over, use your abs to lift you up. We're gonna reach for the opposite side. Now right arm goes up, over. Exhale, support yourself on the floor with that left hand. Right hand flips to face the floor. Your right hip is still making contact with the mat or the headrest wherever you are. Right shoulder is down, big breath in. Exhale, reach up and over, feel that side stretch. Use your abs to lift you up. Little trap stretch to begin. We're gonna roll the shoulders back. Sit up really tall. You're gonna just face forward, bring your right shoulder down to your right ear. 
Make sure both shoulders are even, not lifting up. If you want a little extra, you can gently place the weight of your hand on top of your head without pulling. And just feel the gravity of that. Intensify the stretch through your neck, through your upper traps here. Good, remove the hand, lift up to sitting. Big breath in, exhale, left ear down to left shoulder. Let your face really go slack. Shoulders stay right where they are. If you wanna place your left hand on top of your head without pulling, just letting the weight of the hand intensify that stretch down your neck through your upper traps. Feel free to do that. Remove the hand, return the head to neutral position. Take a big breath in, exhale. Roll the shoulders back, grow another inch. Tuck your shoulder blades into your back pockets. One more time, big breath in. Exhale, roll the shoulders up and back. Tuck the shoulder blades into your back pocket. Shake out your hands and your wrists and you are done. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rebecca. Thank you. Said I wasn't gonna murder you today and then I did. I apologize. Just a little. Just a little. A little light murdering. Uh, thank you so much. Please like this video if you liked it. Please subscribe. We post every single week and um, leave me a comment. Let me know what you thought and what you want to see next. Bye.